Dixon on BBC One Northern Ireland before Imagine, and later than originally planned, let's head back to the Crime Watch studio. Well, the Crime Watch update, it's been a remarkably quiet night, but we have had some intriguing information on at least some of the cases, and 25 calls us called in about the first one, our first appeal about two weeks ago, Nisha Patel-Nazri was stabbed on her own doorstep in Wembley in North London by a man who may have used her own kitchen knife to kill her. Ah! Help me! Help me! I need help! Help! Oh, oh, Nisha! Oh, 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 I'm not this one, please! Oh, oh, trying to uh, bring her back to life. I'm not sure it's going to happen. No. So we're breathing for her. We can all we can. We're looking for a knife very much like this form, which is still missing. But also, Julie, you were telling us about some keys that have gone missing from her house for this distinctive one, tartan one, chub one as well. Absolutely. We know that they went missing around about three weeks prior to the murder. And obviously, where those keys now is pivotal. In and we know there were other attempts at burglary on the house. And two guys in particular were trying to, to find one about five foot ten was yeah. probably the killer. He's the one that ran off in a hooded top and we believe was black. The second one walked off in the opposite direction towards Rugby Avenue. Two hoodies and you're also trying to find several cars, one of which in particular was an R registered Rover, perhaps a newer body shape that we show, we're not sure, but which had dark plastic um, sort of film peeling off the, one of the windows. Absolutely, it's the type of uh, thing that, that we put on so that people can't so see easily into a vehicle. It's that type of film. Uh, and Nisha would have spouted a lot of blood in an awful way that she died possibly one of the guys would have got blood on him yeah somebody out there knows somebody who's done this i need that, that person to come forward and tell us yeah, thanks well no amount of justice can bring back someone who's been murdered but if you ever doubted the importance of catching the killer for the nearest and dearest just listen to the mother of christopher and an amy my boy is lying there in the mortuary and they're out there going about living John, she's devastated. Obviously, she's devastated. And this is in the high street in Sheerness. And you showed some CCTV in the programme of witnesses you're trying to get hold of. And you had a pretty good response, haven't you? Uh, a lady, <coughs> excuse me, a lady has phoned in who we believe is uh, our blonde lady in CCTV. And there we are, we're seeing her there. So she rang in. So that's, that's a fantastic result. She's phoned into the studio. And also, we think we've identified two of the lads who were the police officers just after the incident. And they're the, the ones in the stripy top and the one next to them there. And, and the key thing about this, there were people around in there. There were a lot of people around, even though it was very late and you wanted to hear from those people so you've got it's been successful. All three. Absolutely. That's great. Thanks very much. The life amnesty comes into effect from midnight tonight right across the United Kingdom. A pity uh, wasn't enforced some time ago. A pity it didn't stop an attacker in Salford. There were two separate attacks, one in November, one in December. The guy used not one but two knives in one of the attacks, but we've got some really, really good calls. In fact, over 30 people have rung in on this one. Um, the attacks happened around uh, Swinton uh, in, in Salford, and we think within about a mile and a half of Victoria Park is where the guy with the knife was living. Now, we've had an extraordinary call from someone who says there was a guy living in the park. The caller knows that person. Can I say to that caller, the officer guarantees your name will never come out. Please, please ring us again. And could we appeal to the guy who was driving the white van, who saved one of the victims and then drove her home? A bit of a hero. We need to talk to you, please. You actually saw the knife man. Please give us a call. Lucy Hargreaves was a 22-year-old mum with three kids on an estate in Walton in Liverpool. Nobody who knew her, the car together, uh, or nobody who knew her, can believe what happened to Lucy last month. This is an appalling crime. Lucy, entirely innocent. There's absolutely no reason why anyone should target her. What kind of response have you had, Ian? We've, we've had a limited response, but we've had two anonymous calls who've named the people responsible, so I, I, I'm keen for them to get back in touch with us. And that feeds in, into information you've already had, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Case? It corroborates what we already suspect, but as I say, I'm anxious for those people to get in touch with us. And one other person you want to hear from who made a call from a phone box that mm. night. That's right. That person has clearly witnessed the murder and knows who's responsible, uh, and I would urge him to contact us tonight. Yeah, thanks a lot. 
We've had some calls in relation to these two, 10 people that we need to come forward in relation to the murder of Michael McKenzie in Peckham. It may be that what you've seen or heard you might think to be irrelevant, but the team really need to hear what you've seen. So please, please, if you recognise yourself, give us a call. You can call us here in the studio. Ralph. Do you remember the grey-haired robber, the guy that was robbing the bookmakers in Hatfield and Bourne End? We've had ten names that have been put forward for that guy, so that's pretty good news. And as for the South London train robber, we've had eight names for him, and two callers believe they've seen him very recently on local trains very close to where that attack, that brutal attack, took place. So that's looking good. And very quickly, the Sharon hit me to be quick, but I just want to tell you that Diana Mattis, the Jamaican drug dealer, we've had an alias name for her and contact details as well. Very helpful. And by any reason, Joe Shipton was a bit odd. He kept his savings in the airing cupboard and his smalls in the fridge. But who would bludgeon such an eccentric to death? All right. Oh, uh, if you win, I want a pint. But I want it back Monday. All right. Thanks, Joe. He got a pretty limited response, and it's not perhaps surprising, given that he lived such a, a secretive, private life. What, what information have you had there tonight? We've had um, very limited information. One lady who says that she may have seen him with a, um, another lady in a, in a wheelchair. Um, but other than that, it, it really is um, very limited. And the key thing is these 800 people who live in the village yes. where he is in Sheen. Someone's got a clue there. I, I'm fairly certain that the answer to this is in the village, and I'd appeal to everybody in Shearing to look and uh, give us a ring if they know anything. Okay, Simon, thanks Thank very you. much indeed. We've had, we've had more than uh, 20 calls on our next case. Maurice Martin, who was a retired police officer who eventually died following a burglary at his home in Crowborough in East Sussex. He had a copper's eye for the guy who attacked him. Big, big bloke. Just tell us about the guy you've been looking for. Yes, big, big chap, big round face, six foot two, very well built, 16 stone plus possibly wearing glasses and waddled and had a very peculiar Waddle. gait yes. now you've had five names put up we have indeed yes. and are you telling me some other local information that intrigues you there is some local information which we will obviously be following up uh, after the program and you were trying to find a, a white car because when Morris Martin came out um, or at least when the burglar came out there was a car running outside a white sunbeam of some description uh, it, he's described it as a white Talbot horizon or a sunbeam and the burglar could easily have just got into it instead this great big fat man socked an 80 year old in the face yes, quite unnecessary yeah. violence he could have just walked past but well, he chose to uh, if anybody's got more information on this case please give us a ring we well, can find all tonight's cases on our website at bbc.co.uk slash crime. And if you've been a victim of crime, the victim support line is 0845 30 30 900. Crime Watch is back on Wednesday the 21st of June, one month from now, from the team and all the investigating officers from Fiona and from me. Thank you for all your calls. Every month we've got proof that they really do make a difference. Do you sleep well from all of us here? Good night. Good night. Get the headlines every 15 minutes on BBC News 24. BBC News, whenever you need to know.